What was that? Hey, I'm Jay, and this is my Lo-Fi Workshop. Thanks for coming by. In today's video, we're going to talk about this Dracosis, or Draconic Pegasus. And if you want to see more of how that was done, uh, just watch this video right here. Here we go. All right, so today's journey of creation starts at the thrift store with another bag of toys. And let's see what we've got here. I always was a fan of these old Fisher-Price animals. I think I'll put him somewhere safe. And these three are the ones that we're gonna mix up. So of course we have our raptor here and we're gonna take his lower half. We've got the unicorn and we're gonna take his upper half. And to top it all off, we're going to add the wings from this pterodactyl. Hey, boss says you gotta watch that safety video. Yeah, I guess he's got a point. Let me just... The Lo-Fi Workshop, a place that is both fun and safe. Be careful, and always wear the proper protective equipment when crafting. Use the right tools for the job, like the pointy cutter, the saw guy, and this electric chopper deal. When handling super glue, make sure you wear rubber gloves. Remember kids, it's only fun if it's safe for everyone. Alright, now that that's out of the way, we can get back to crafting. Now the first thing you want to do is mark it where you want to cut it. It makes it a lot easier to visualize. And this guy can help out. Thanks little buddy. So now we cut. As you can see, this unicorn was pretty well behaved while I cut it. Almost got it. Do a little dance. All right, now we can see how that's gonna go together. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just cut them. He's a lot easier to cut because he's hollow, unlike the unicorn. All right, we see we've got a good fit there. We just need a pair of wings. That's one. And two. There we go. Now the torso of the raptor was a little bit wider than the torso of the unicorn, so I'm going to sand that down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and sand everything a little bit before I glue. And now we get to sticking things together. Don't forget your rubber gloves. Alright, looks good so far. We'll patch that up a bit. Now when you use this baking soda, it can help fill in the gaps and create a stronger bond. So let's see what he looks like with the wings. Alright, not bad. Mm -hmm. 
There we go, trying to match it up to his shoulder joint there as best as I can. I kind of imagine he would have some kind of different structure to his shoulder joint that would allow for the uh, multi-limb experience there. So now that that's done, let's tidy it up and smooth things over with some clay. I use this air dry clay, but you can use whatever works best for you. I recommend, of course, not using anything you're going to have to put in the oven if you're going to be using it with plastic toys like these. And I wanted to expand the unicorn's mane down the back of the creature. So I use this tool to give it a little texture. Okay, here he is. Let's see how well he stands. Oh. Well, no worries. We can make a base for him. We'll make it out of this here coaster. I found this coaster also at the thrift store. And I'll show you my process for making a base. Basically, what I did was mix a little bit of water and PVA glue together. And I spread that all around on this coaster. Once I had that on, I had this craft sand that was generously donated, and I put that on there. Once it was pretty much dried, I made sure to spill off the excess. And now I'm just patching up the spots that got missed and creating a little bit more of a texture variation. And I've got these rocks that are intended for a fish tank, but uh, I think they'll work just fine here. Alright, there we go. We've got some texture on the coaster. It's looking a little bit more like Earth, so let's go ahead and stick them on. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, get back here. Hey, it's me again. Just here to remind you to do all those YouTube things. So if you like what you're seeing here, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, or leave a comment down below and let me know what you think or what you'd like to see in a future episode. And uh, for now, we'll just go ahead and get back to it. So. All right, here's my box of paints. So you know what that means. Time to mix some colors up and get to work. Now I basically just use red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple with black and white and mix my colors that way. I don't have any fancy colors except for my metallics and glow-in-the-dark things and stuff like that. I did everything in thinner layers and tried to build up the colors as I went. Now I didn't really have a good idea when I started coloring him, but I knew I wanted it to be blue. I know it's kind of weird because the last couple of episodes have featured a blue creature as well, but so be it. Now for this creature I have a different explanation for why he's blue, and that would be his flight. Uh, basically this creature is most terrifying when approaching from above, and so it has a blue coloration to help it blend into the skies behind it. Now if you're already looking up, Sometimes you'll see a shadowy figure, or you might see a glint of gold light from their horn and claws. Either way, it's not something to look forward to. 
They've got massive claws on their hindquarters that can pick you right up off the ground, or they can trample you under hoof. So any adventurer would be wise to watch their back. And in this part of the planet, many adventurers will in fact travel in groups just for that reason. And so I wanted to give the ground a little bit more of a natural coloration. I was imagining the habitat of this creature to be a little bit more like the Eurasian steppe, so kind of sandy, rocky, and patches of grasslands. and I got out the hair dryer in between layers. And there's that fancy gold paint. Alright, now we're going to seal in that work. And now we're going to apply some washes. I get a really thinned out but dark color and spread it over the surface and dab up the excess with a paper towel. And as you can see that sinks in nicely into those crevices. I do the same thing for the hair or feathers of the mane on the back. And then we come in with some lighter tones and dry brush, hitting it from above with those lighter colors to bring out highlights. And you can't forget his eyes. All right, so there it is, the Dracosis. Overall, I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. I like his colors. I like his overall pose and posture. I also kind of like how it looks like a slice of pizza. But uh, yeah, anyway, the Let's go ahead and give you those glamour shots.
Don't touch it. <laughs>